Hello and welcome back to another episode of Advanced RC Adventures. A2RC here. This is a channel where we investigate, explore, build and explain, upgrade and advance Nitro RCs to another level. Come start a new adventure with me. Today we do have a fun Nitro engine overview for you today. We have a force specific engine. This is the R18 or the 18R. I've seen it denoted both ways in both the instruction manual as well as the company. This is distributed out of Germany from Parkour. And this is the exact reason why I wanted to do this Force 18 engine overview volume. This is the Inspiration engine. So let's open this thing up and let's start the adventure. So we have our bubble wrap here. Let's get it out of the bag. Seal it up like we do for all of our new and pre-owned engines. Let's cut it open. Take it out of the bag here. Take out our desiccant pack here. It's always great to have a brand new desiccant pack with your engines if you're able. Let's take a little walk through, a little look around on this engine. This is probably one of the best four specific built engines that I have come across. This is another small block. It's the R18 or the 18R distributed through Park Core. Have an SG shaft. And like all of our engine overviews, we're gonna take off this back plate. This is a bump start engine converted. Take off our cooling head and take a look through the entire engine. We got our pinch bolt here. This is another standard six millimeter pinch bolt. Let's wiggle off the carb. This is a very, very similar slide carb to the HPI force built G 3.0 HO high output version. We have dual O-rings there, one at the bottom of the carb neck as well as with the top. Our idle speed adjustment here. All brass construction high speed needle. Slide carb with a rubber boodle boot. This is a seven millimeter bore down inside. So this is a relatively big or at least a good size for an 18 size displacement engine. There's no additional markings on here. Most of it is composite, of course, and as you see, there's some alumina components. This is a two needle carb. We have our high speed here, like I mentioned, and our low speed there on the slide barrel. Let's put that aside and keep on moving around. Like I mentioned just briefly, this is a converted bump start engine. This comes with a pretty standard back plate setup for all of the force small block engines. This uses the smaller style one-way bearing. It's a 12 millimeter bearing, but it has the same type of starter shaft. Originally on the end of the crankshaft, there's that pin and spring for the starter shaft, it uses a butyl O-ring. So very much the same as the other HPI sister engines, the G3.0s. The pull start itself, nice silver sticker, force engines made in Taiwan. This does not have a retainer, so I just have some rubber bands hanging around here. I've used painter tape. You can use whatever you want, just if you're gonna take your pull starts off and there's no retainer in the back, do something to make sure that that's captured and that cartridge and spring doesn't come flying out. Like I mentioned, this is the engine that I was excited to start this Force 18 engine overview series. And uh, can you blame me? This is a great looking small block from Force. So let's pop off this back plate here and show you what's going on inside. Give it a little wiggle and a pull out. Let's uh, take a look at these backplate bolts. These are an M two and a half. 
more than likely it's going to be six or eight millimeters long. Looks actually it's a seven millimeter long bolt. So that's a little bit unique, but still an M two and a half. This back plate is made and distributed through force and part core specific for the R18 or the 18R. Still uses a butyl style O-ring. It's a semi interference engine with that cutout there on the back plate. And for me who really enjoy bump start engines, this is a no brainer. And by eliminating that pull start, we reduce the weight about 60 grams. So that's a significant savings for this engine. Take a look down inside of our internals. Let's get off this head and keep on going. This head button wants to come off here, so let's go ahead and talk about this first. This is a standard style head button. So it uses standard style plugs, it's not a turbo engine. And let's pop off our shim stack here and give them a little measure. Go ahead and measure these head shims. This is a point two. They're both brass and a point two. So this is a point four shim stack, which is a little bit big, but we can go ahead and try this engine out and play with it and see if that's what makes most sense, especially depending on what type of nitro concentration. But it uses two head shims at a total of 0.4. Let's take a look and talk a little bit about this head. We have our part core logo there, R18. This is the exact same head that the G3.0, T3.0, etc. uses. It's cast, it has multi ports for the air to flow through the head. It can go through multiple different directions. And this is the only head in the force lineup that uses a true black color anodizing. The T3.0 uses a dark gray. The G3.0 versions use just the matte cast light gray head color and for me i love this little bit of two-tone dark gray and black kind of setup between the block and the head i love having a true black and color head it goes with lots of different color schemes and can work from anything from red silver carbon and even blue accents black is great neutral color take a look at these head bolts together this is an M3 bolt, so that's a great little upgrade. See how long it is. And this is a 14 millimeter long head bolt. So a pretty robust head bolt. You definitely can't go wrong there. Gonna head and take out our sleeve. We'll look at that here in a moment. Let's get out our piston and connecting rod assembly and go directly to the crank here. Like I said, this is an SG crank, a nice big opening there on the induction window. It's not drilled or filled, but it's heavily ramped down inside. These crankshafts have that spring and pin that are normal for these four small block engines. I've simply removed that and with the addition of the bump start back plate, it works perfectly together. This bore, the center bore, is relatively big. Let's go ahead and give that a little measure. So we've got an eight millimeter bore, which is a great complement to this shaft. There's nothing else really significant about it other than they did a small amount of chamfering there on the edge all the way around the circumference of the balance lobe so that's a little bit of weight reduction and the opening is relatively big so this will be a, a decent little crank for this club racer engine setup let's walk around the block itself i don't know about you it might be just the color but also the design and styling 
I really like this engine block. It's pretty, it's beautiful to me, and the internal machining is pretty great too. This uses chrome steel bearings front and rear. And I don't know if you can see it down inside, but the machining for the transfer ports and the boost port, as well as the exhaust port is relatively extreme. There is a cutout inside of the exhaust, which is relatively standard for some of these rear exhaust engines, but this is honestly extreme. It is epic. It goes the entire distance from inside to out to allow for that, that airflow to go from the inside to the outside as evenly, as quickly as possible. And the bore down inside for the window for the exhaust port is massive. But it's just a pretty looking block and I'm happy to have it here in the collection. Let's jump over to the piston assembly set. This is a decent piston. It's a flat top piston. It uses a captured wrist pin. There's clips on either side. And this has two grooves on top of the piston for oil. The skirt is cut out there for the front. Always when you're doing the assembly, that cutout's gonna face towards the front of the carburetor of the engine. As well as if there's an oil groove there on the connecting rod, that's gonna be facing towards the front as well. This is a billet machine connecting rod, but this is a cast piston that's later been machined. Brass bushings and it's a decent little setup. Force claims this to be another 2.2 horsepower engine. And if it's possible for the HO to get that, then it's very possible for this 18R to do the same. So the HO version of the sleeve and piston setup was a wide open kind of setup, very similar to this 18R, but it is interesting to know that it's not the exact same piston and sleeve set. There are differences and you wouldn't be able just to swap them out. Let's start here on the exhaust window. Dog ears, but we do have a angle or a taper going up to have a little bit more flow. It's a relatively straight topped window and it does have an internal bevel. Looking down below here, we do have a pretty dramatic lower bevel, which is great. It's a good addition so that we can have proper airflow come around, up through those channels and into transfer port or the boost port, etc. Nice, big, open transfer port. This is a very long, a very big transfer port. Got a bevel down inside and even some of the chrome lining overflows onto that bevel, helping to seal that in. Mirrored image there is the transfer port on the other side. Again, nice big wide open transfer port. And then we move over to the boost port. This is a nice big boost port, something similar to what the HO has and what these 18 style displacement engines should be. As I've showed you before in the G3.0 and the T3.0, the boost port is extremely small as well as the transfer ports. This is how these transfer ports should be designed and created on these 18 style engines. So these features will allow this 18R to have a lot more bottom end torque as well as top end speed. And this is an ABC construction. So we have our aluminum piston, we have our brass sleeve, and then our chrome lining on the inside of the sleeve. To me, this is an exciting, opportunity to show an engine that's not very well known or well distributed, especially here in the States. And it's just another flavor or another version of the 18 style force engines. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at the other engines in this volume, feel free to check them out now. And if you enjoy these style of engine overviews, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like 10 scale nitro, and especially touring cars, then this is a place to be. And thanks for taking the adventure with me.